Hello, it's Alejandro, also known as 137. I'm going to show you how to change the creation time of your video clips, uh, both non-programmatically and programmatically. We'll start off with the non-programmatic approach. We're going to go through iMovie. This is when I was in Zurich Airport, or Zurich Flughafen, and I dropped the suitcase, then the escalator. Yeah. Yeah, um, not a proud moment. She was all right. You know, I thought it was going to wipe her out. <laughs> she was going to go down the stairs. But it was honestly like a narwhal. The handle had come out. I clenched my suitcase after that. That's the one that we're going to use to change the creation date. What other better way to desensitize myself? First thing you're going to do is go to My Media. You're going to select all the clips that you want to change the time for. Then you're going to go to the Modify menu, which will be in the toolbar, right top left corner. You go to Adjust Clip Date and Time. It'll tell you how many clips you've selected. Here I've selected two clips and you can adjust it. So here it's saying 1.54 a.m. I want to adjust it to be 10.54 when it was actually recorded. You can change file creation time as well. You click OK. It adjusts these proportionally. It doesn't just unify them all in a one time. The way you can tell that is by going to the title tag, going to date and time. You drag it over. You notice this is... 1054, and I expect this one to be 1055, was from the minute after. It'll be 1055, right? And it just change them all to 1054 or anything like that. Now for the programmatic approach. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna start this from the ground up. So you're gonna see me even during the planning stage. It's gonna be a whole walkthrough. Let's start from what problem I'm trying to address. As you saw with the non-programmatic solution, an issue that I was running into when I shared a lot of my videos from my phone after I'd come back from recording my vlogs and the music videos over there in Switzerland was that there was a time zone issue. A lot of the clips were nine hours before they were actually recorded. I'm going to show you this clip right here. I'm going to press Command I. That's going to bring up the information menu. I'm going to look at created and modified. You see created, it's showing September 6, 2022, 1.54. I'm going to show you the time uh, on Google Photos, the actual time, 10.54. So we're nine hours before where we need to be. What does that checkbox mean? Do you want to change the creation date? Is it talking about this right here, the created and modified? Actually, it's talking about the metadata. Um, if you change the created and modified, which we will still do during this walkthrough, it still won't be picked up by iMovie. You have to go and change the actual metadata. We will know our program success if I am able to drag the video file onto iMovie and have the title tag pick up on the proper date and time. I've shown you how to get the file information, the created, the modified, as you can see here. I want to show you how to get some of the metadata information as well. What we need to do is bring open terminal. If you're not familiar with how to get to terminal, you can press command space, click terminal, and it will open it up. I have mine in the dock. I'm going to drag it over here so that you can see as well. The first thing to do, create a test folder. I can drag in clips that I want to work with, with duplicates, nothing that you're afraid to lose, just to see the program in action and then you can apply it in real use cases. So the first thing I'm going to do is use Mictor, make directory. I'm going to make a directory called test folder. It's going to pop up on my other desktop screen. I'm going to drag it over there for you so you can see it. I'm going to just drag these in there. The next thing I want to do is create a folder for my code project. A lot of people run into naming woes. One of the famous cruxes for software engineers. I really encourage people to take a step back, whether it's a function, whether it's a whole project, like right here. I'm trying to describe the functionality of this given entity. I think it would be accurate to call this file date and time modifier. I'm going to use Mictor again. Now that we have that, we should key into it using CD and make a file. I'm gonna write this in Python. You can make this in shell. I just found that it's really nice to see it in Python. We're gonna to have to interject some of the shell commands inside of Python to achieve what we want. We're in there now. You can see I'm gonna use ls. It's gonna list all the files. There's nothing in there. We are in this folder right here. Let's create a file that's the namesake of the folder. I'm gonna use the touch command. We're gonna make the extension.py because we want a Python file. Now, if I use the list command, we can see it in there. 
for planning purposes, I'm going to create a readme file just to describe general functionality. It's like a love child between an HTML file and a regular text file. You can do a lot of cool formatting things for text and it's quicker. I create that, let's list, it's in there. Now I'm going to press code. I have VS code. I'm in the directory now. I'm going to put code dot and that's going to open it up. VS Code is my IDE. It's my integrated development environment. It's the place where I write the code. This is a markdown file. When I type over here, you can already see there's some different formats. I'm going to show you how you can get detailed information about these files, including what we're going to seek to modify, metadata. I'm going to use metadata list, MDLS. I'm going to drag the file I want, place it in there, and it's going to give me a readout of a lot of metadata information. I just press enter. Notice up here, where did these backslashes come from? Well, when I drag it in here, those are called escape characters. They escape the space that comes after them so that the computer knows how to read that. Another way to get around this is you could just put the whole path. This is the path. It's the address to the file. You could put that whole path in quotes, but then you can't put escape characters. If you put escape characters and quotes, it'll think that those escape characters, that's part of the file. And it'll be like, oh, I can't find this file. So you got to choose one or the other. You can see there's a lot of different information here. The time added. This is the metadata. This is what happens when you take a photo, when you make a video. The one that we want to zero in on here is this one right here. This is what iMovie is reading. We can modify that and I can prove to you that that's the case. Before we approach this programmatically and have it go through every single file and go through the entire directory and do this, I just want to do this as a proof of concept. This type of metadata is EXIF data. It's the metadata that's related to photos, videos, and such. And in order to modify that EXIF data, we're going to use a tool called EXIF tool. And you can get that by using brew install EXIF tool. Brew is the command for homebrew. Homebrew is how you get a lot of these libraries in order to do stuff like this. Once you have EXIF tool, you'll find that it's even easier to list all of the files metadata. We're going to use EXIF tool hyphen A and then the path to the file. Remember, you can just drag this over. And you can see they have a really nice key value structure here. It's taken out a lot of the excess like this, has, you know, the K and D, all that. We could try to find it in this long list or you can use the command XIF tool hyphen G and then put the particular attribute you're trying to target. In our case, creation date and then drag the file in. That gives us the attribute we're looking for. Let's look at changing it. We're going to use EXIF tool overwrite original. Then we're going to do hyphen and then the creation date attribute equals the kind that we want to change that to. So I get over one image updated. So it was successful. It was showing plus two hours. Now you can see it's showing minus seven hours, which is where I'm at in relation to UTC. And if we drag it onto iMovie, I would expect to see the date and time title reflect that. There it is, 1054. Excellent. And it should show up here as well if I click this. It's showing up. And so you've seen how you can do that one by one, which is fine if that's all you want to do. But if you have 100 gigabytes of files, you might want to just do it across an entire directory. And that's what I'm going to show you. Loop through the first level of the directory, constrain what files can be modified, files that are either photos or videos. Then we're going to need to concatenate the path to the directory with the file path to give us the absolute path to the file. I also added the arguments. We're going to need something for directory path. That's going to be a string because it's going to be concatenated with the file name. We're going to need a shift amount. That's going to be how much we need a shift. In my case, it's going to be nine hours in the future. The unit specifies whether the shift amount is in hours, minutes, seconds. So let's get to the helper function. That'll be called right around here. Right after we've concatenated the files, we're going to have to start looking into the helper function. We're going to have to constrain what units are acceptable, specifically days, hours, minutes, and seconds. That's where we're going to cap. We're going to use conditionals based on that unit to plug the shift amount into the correct keyword argument, the right chord, because we're going to use time delta. Time delta takes an integer or a float, which is why we have the shift amount as an integer or float. And remember, a float is just a number with a decimal. The reason why it comes out as a float is because date time is a float. It's the number of seconds from the Unix epic, January 1st, 1970. All right, I'm going to make modify file first. 
We have directory path, shift amount, uh, which is into float and then unit. It's gonna be returning none. There's nothing we need for this to return. Like it says here, we need to loop through the files on the first level of the directory. We could do a loop that says for file name because it should come back as a, a file name. So we're gonna bring in OS and the method lister, which is gonna give us all of the file names in a string format on the first level of a directory. For file name and lister, and this is when we're gonna plug in the directory path. Uh, we wanna concatenate the directory absolute path with the file name to get the absolute path. File, absolute path. I'm gonna bring in path from the OS module, path.join. This is just gonna bring together the directory path and the file name. This is where we're gonna constrain modifiable files. And we're gonna target the extension by search from re. And re allows us to use regex, which is regular expression, so that we can use patterns to find things. I'll show you the documentation for search. Search is gonna scan through a string and look for one match to the pattern. It's gonna give us a match object. So we're gonna have to target it by using dot group zero, which is just gonna give us the first value, which is all there is. We need to escape this because we're looking for a dot because a dot is a reserved character in regex. So if we're actually looking for a dot, we need to escape it. We talked about escape characters before. We're gonna escape it with a backslash. So we're gonna say backslash dot and then we're gonna use a uh, word character which will just you know a through Z it matches numbers and we're gonna say a plus here which is gonna say exactly one or more of them now we're gonna give the file absolute path we're gonna get the group zero like we mentioned then we want to make sure it's lowercase because all of the extensions represented in the list are lowercase next we're gonna say if extension and acceptable extensions we're gonna use the stat method taken from OS that's gonna allow us to target the file birth time. We're going to pass it to the helper function at this point. It's gonna do some of the shifting for us. We're gonna pull in date time from date time. From here, we're gonna use time delta. It's gonna depend on unit. That's gonna define the rest of the conditionals. Let's bring time delta in here. If the unit is days, we're gonna target that with the shift amount. If it's hours, we're gonna target the hours corg with shift amount, minutes, and so on. So for file birth time, we're gonna need a date time. And this is not gonna be in a timestamp format. We're gonna use the date time object and we're gonna say from timestamp, which will give us a local timestamp. Then we're gonna give the file birth time and we're gonna return the file birth time plus the delta. Now remember if the delta is negative, it's all right, you're plus a negative, it's like subtracting it. And take note that adding or subtracting the time delta from a date time is still gonna result in a date time being returned. We're gonna add an else block that's going to print check the unit you are using because the only reason this block would be hit is if you gave a unit that is not among the accepted units and so this will be a reminder to the user we're going to make a variable called shifted date time and it's going to be the result of shift date time being called let's feed it file birth time most of these arguments that we're giving it have been taken straight from what was given to us when modify file was called shift amount and unit we're passing that on. The only thing we're deriving is file birth time. We're using stats. So that's the one that's happening internally to the function. But the rest are given to us. So we're just passing that along. We're going to have a couple formatted date times. We're going to need different formats for the different contexts in which we're using this shifted date time. Okay, so these are the different formats. This is month, day, year, hour, minute, second separated by colons. This whole string is separated by colons. This one has forward slashes at the beginning and colons at the end. I've labeled them based on where we're going to be plugging them in. I'm going to add a print statement so that we know things are going according to plan. The first one we're going to use the say hyphen d command in shell, and then we're going to alter the modify time, and that's going to use Python's uTime. I'm going to put another print statement here to assure everything's going correctly. Now set file d is assuring that we're targeting the creation date for a given file. Notice I used an F string here. We have the birth time formatted, adjusted date time interpolated. We have the file absolute path interpolated, separated by spaces. And here we put quotes because remember when we were talking about the commands, sometimes when you drag the file in there, it auto escapes those space characters, but you could also just use quotes. Well, here we don't have that auto escaping of the space characters. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it in quotes and it's fine. I'm referring to the file. We're then gonna call this birth time command and we're gonna make sure that we have shell set to true. It's gonna be executing the shell and then we're gonna move on to uTime. That's gonna help us modify the modify time. Line 37 is going to be modifying this created date. 
after it is called in line 38. And line 39 is going to be changing this state right here under modified. This is just for consistency, but as for the metadata, the one that's going to affect that title in iMovie, what we're going to need to do is make a new command. Now, this command is going to be long. For the sake of consistency, I don't want to just modify the one attribute that's going to change that for iMovie. We're doing a clean job here. And because it's so long, we're going to take advantage of the ability of the call method to take in a list. So if you have multiple flags or something of that sort, it can be a new element in the list. So that prevents us from having to make an overloaded string for execution. In fact, you're running into a lot of issues doing that. So I'm going to break this list apart. I'm going to start with what we're calling here, which is the exif tool. Then if you remember this from earlier, I'm going to say hyphen overwrite original. And then I'm going to start making formatted strings and target all the attributes that I want. Creation date being the first one. You might remember the structure from earlier. This time we're going to do it for all the attributes and we're going to do it programmatically so that it can go through all of the files for us and we don't have to do this for every single one of them. So what I'm going to be interpolating here is the metadata formatted adjusted time. And remember that's just this. It's just a string that represents the date in the format of year, month, day, space, hour, minute, second, separated by colon for each of the attributes that I want to target. So all the date related ones. And then I'm going to call this. Remember, this is all inside of the if block. So if the extension is not acceptable, I'm going to put this else block like we did in the helper function. So I'm going to make an F string that says skipped unacceptable extension. The reason I did an F string is because I'm actually going to put the extension that was skipped because we have access to that. What you'll find is that DS store will be skipped on Mac OS. I'm going to take this, which is located outside of that. We had that other print statement. We're going to make sure that that's right here. If you remember, we changed this from earlier. So I'm going to actually reduplicate the original file so that we make sure that there's nothing that has been changed by us in the past and that this is all fresh. So I'm going to delete this and bring in another. I'm going to use control tilde to bring up the terminal menu. And I'm going to run file the in time modifier. But first, let's make sure to call our function here. I'm going to say modify file, directory path should be a string. I need it shifted by nine hours. So I'm going to give it an integer of nine. Lastly, I need unit hours. So I'm going to give it a string of hours. Now I'm going to run the file and see what goes down. Awesome. So it looks like it went according to plan. We have before and after, and you see these are different numbers. These are the date times in the seconds from Unix Epic format. You see this one's changed as well. We get the one image files updated that happens anytime you use that exif tool command. It's a built-in print statement for that one. These ones we put, but you know, the true test is if it works on iMovie. I'm gonna drag these two on there and we're expecting it to say 1054 and 1055. Both of these were 154 and 155. I'm gonna drag it over this one and drag it over this one. Let's see. Excellent. 1054, 1055. And if I click the clips, just like when we did this non-programmatically using modify in the toolbar, we see it successfully changed the metadata. We have done it. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or reach out to me directly. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey. That is a